Welcome back to Stage 2, Part 2, where we look at creating our AWS infrastructure. In Stage 2, Part 1, we create our repository, we then created a default cluster. In Stage 2, Part 2, we're going to, first of all, make sure that our repository is working and that we can push up to it. So I'll show you some commands that you can use to push and tag your image. Then we'll look at creating an initial task definition. From the task definition, we'll create a service, and then from the service, we'll make sure that we can register our task definition to our service, and that we can hit our public DNS address that will allow us to ensure that everything is up and running. Okay, so first of all, we're going to grab the push commands here in the repositories, and we're going to make sure that we can build and push our Docker image up from our local computer to our repository that we just created. So we've built that using docker build. We're now going to head back to the repositories and grab the docker tag to tag our image. Now that we've tagged it, we want to push it up to our repository, so we'll head back and grab our push command here. Input docker push. And this is pushing the image up to our repository in AWS. Close that. Now we are going to create a task definition. So we're going to head along to task definition, select create task definition, select next. And for our task definition name, we're going to call it demo web API dash task definition. We're going to select as a task role. And now we're going to add a container. The container name we're going to give it is demo web API. container. We're going to grab the image from our repository, so we'll grab the repository URI there. We'll copy and paste that into image there, and we'll add latest to the end of our image name. We're going to give it a memory limit of 128, and we're going to say port 80 and 80. That should be it. So we'll go and say create, and that's our task definition created. We're going to head along to clusters now, where we'll add the service to our cluster, and we'll assign our task definition that we've just created to our service. So we're going to search our task definition name there, and we're going to add demo web API for our service name, dash service. We're going to spin up one task, and we'll select next. We're not going to add any load balancing, and we're not going to adjust the service. So we'll say create, and say view services. And we can see that that's pending and starting to run. So if we need to see uh, what's been spun up or if there's any issues, we can head along to the service itself, then the events tab. And the events tab will tell us if um, what's happening basically. Is the service spinning up? Has there been a problem? And we could investigate a bit more. Now we're going to head along to EC2 instances, because what we're going to do is grab our public DNS address. And this is going to allow us to enter into our Postman client where we can make sure that our task definition and service are working as we expect. So we're going to in Postman put our public DNS address with forward slash API and forward slash ping. We're going to hit send, we get pong back, and we get a status of 200. Okay, so let's quickly recap what we just created. We created an initial task definition. The task definition allows us to add containers. And the containers, we can add the settings that our container wants to use, such as CPU usage, memory usage, and the image that you want to run on your container. We then created an initial service, and we registered our task definition to our service. If you look at the image on screen, it gives it a better indication on what we've just created in the AWS infrastructure stage. On the outside, we have our ECS cluster, and then inside our ECS cluster, we have container instances. In our demo example, we only have one container instance. A container instance is an EC2 server. But we can have one or many container instances within our cluster. We then have a service inside our instance. And inside the service, we have a task. And a task is an instance of the task definition we've created. That concludes stage two, part two. Head along to my next video where we look at stage three, creating our Bitbucket Pipelines YAML file.